Okay, before I start today's Retro Hub and PlayStation 2 setup guide, if you like what you see today, hit notifications, subscribe and like so you don't miss upcoming retro emulation content here on my channel, just Jamie. That means you'll get notified every time I release a new setup guide, and it also helps out my channel too, for which I'm always grateful for. Uh, so yesterday, I uploaded Retro Hub, and that's the initial setup guide. And so today, we're going to be looking at adding PlayStation 2. So of course, we're going to need to emulate emulator for this and we're going to be using the best emulator for PlayStation 2. This is PCSX2. Uh, what I'm going to do is put a link in the description for this official website for PCSX2. I'm going to download the portable version of this and the reason I'm going to do that is because we can easily access this and just put it into our retro hub folder. So I've already downloaded this and here it is. So PCSX2, once you've downloaded this, you need to extract the folder which is inside. So if I just extract this onto the desktop for now and here we go so we can now delete that archive of pcsx2 now i'm going to be doing this from yesterday's video so if you've not checked out the video the initial setup guide then watch that one first uh, like i said this is a continuation video so if you followed yesterday's video you'll know where we're at at this point okay so what we're going to do then is go into the retro hub folder and we got the emulator folder in here. So what I'm going to do is literally just drag and drop that PCSX2 folder inside of the emulator folder. Now, obviously, before we actually open up Retro Hub, we do need to configure PCSX2. So if we just go into that folder, we're going to open up PCSX2 XE for the first time. And here we go then, so this is going to give us the first time configuration, so language selector, I'm going to leave this to English and that's default, if I just press apply, and there we go, I'm now going to go to next, and we're also going to go to next again, next thing we need for this is BIOS of course, PlayStation 2 requires BIOS files, so I need to uncheck use default setting because my BIOS files are in a different place, I'm then going to go to browse, and then from here, I'm then just going to locate my PlayStation 2 BIOS files. Okay, once you've found your BIOS files, I'm going to just go to Refresh List. Okay, and as we can see, under Select a BIOS ROM, I've now got a few BIOS files. So the BIOS file I'm going to use is the bottom one just there. This is USA. And from here, I'm just going to double left click on that one. And here we go then, so we're now inside of PCSX2, so this is all set up for now. What I am going to do is just make sure the games boot up in full screen. So I'm going to go to config, and if I drop down to video, and then window settings, I'm then going to just go over to default to full screen mode on open. If I just check that one for now, and I apply, and I press OK. Next thing we're going to want to do is obviously what a controller. So I've got an Xbox controller set up. This is Bluetooth. So again, I'm going to go up to config, down to controllers, and plugin settings. Under game device APIs, I've got X input checked. So that tells us that Xbox controllers work fine with this API. I'm then going to go over to pad one, and if I go to quick setup, I can then use my Xbox controller to start mapping. So please enter an input for select, L3, R3, and so on until you've run out of buttons. And once that's finished, we're just going to go down to apply and OK that. OK, so that's the emulator side of things set up. So what we need to do now is actually put some games into our retro hub directory. So again, I'm going to go into the Retro Hub directory, or the Retro Hub folder, and from yesterday's video, you'll remember that I created a few folders for naming each system, and in each system, I've got games. So for example, I put my NES games into a NES folder. Now for PlayStation 2, I'm going to do the same, so right click, New, Folder, and I'm going to call this folder PS2. And of course, I'm going to drag and drop my PlayStation 2 games, which are in .iso format, or file extension, inside of that PS2 folder. And if I just close this down, what we're going to do next then is open up Retro Hub. Okay, so... 
perfect just like yesterday's initial setup guide so what we're going to need to do then is press escape and of course this brings up your menu system uh, from here what i'm going to do is just use my mouse for this i'm going to go down to systems and i'm going to go to the top and just drop down until we find pcsx2 or playstation 2 here we go so sony playstation 2 just check this one and we can also see just here under emulators that yes pcsx2 is supported we can also use play with this play is another playstation 2 emulator but by far for your best compatibility pcsx2 is the best out there okay so we've now finished with this and what we're going to do next then is just go to emulators and again we're going to go to the top and we're going to scroll down and we're going to find pcsx2 just here if we just left click and here we go so we're going to leave the name as pcsx2 and for path we're going to link this up to the executable of psx2 so we're going to go to load and then it's just a case of finding the folder where the emulators are so i'm going to go down to users into my computers folder into my desktop folder and from here we're going to find that retro hub folder here's the emulators folder here's the pcsx2 folder and if we just scroll down here is the pcsx2.exe that we need to select just double left click and then we're just going to go up to save changes and then we can press escape to close out a menu now we're also going to see on the left panel just here, we now got PlayStation 2 up here. If I just left click, here's our games just here. Now obviously we're going to need some artwork for these too. So what we're going to do is press escape and we're going to find the scraper. So here it is and I've still got my username and password. What we're going to do is then go down to games to scrape and I'm going to go for all. Oh, so we got 20 games selected scrape now again just like yesterday's uh, the playstation 2 games are finding it a little bit hard to actually scrape and it's quite likely because we got brackets here and sometimes scraping databases don't like this so what i'm going to do is just backspace edit the name and then click on search and here we go so we've now got 007 confirm And it's also happened to Capcom too. So again, what I'm going to do is just backspace those brackets and go to search. And here it is. And just confirm that. And press escape. And here we go. Here's our artwork for games. Okay, so for this, I'm going to go down to PlayStation 2. And we've now got the few games in the library. Everything's good to go. I'm going to check out Capcom versus SNK 2. <coughs> play okay so if i just come out of that as we can see everything's working fine and just remember by pressing the start button for a few seconds or the escape button that's going to act as your hotkey so of course we can actually mess around with video settings in pcsx2 i'm going to show you a couple of things very briefly so we're going to exit out of retro hub just escape and from here we're just going to scroll to the top quit quit retro hub so here we go as we seen just a minute ago everything's running nicely what we're going to do then is go into the retro hub folder emulators folder and we're going to go back to pcsx2 if we open up the emulator what we can do from here is go to config if we go down to video and we're going to go down to window settings from gs window we can change the aspect ratio now just bear in mind if you change this to widescreen some of your games might look too stretched so for a lot of games unless you're using a widescreen hack i recommend just putting this to standard 4x3 now if we just come out of this and go back to config back down to video plugin settings from here, this is where we can really make things look awesome for PlayStation 2. 
So under render, I'm normally going to suggest leaving this to OpenGL. It works fine for me, but if you have any problems not getting a picture or black screen, then change it to a different render. But normally OpenGL should work fine. Uh, next up, we got internal resolution. Now, as you can see just here, we can actually upscale to 5K. Uh, normally, your sweet spot, even for a fairly good computer, is around 1080p to 2K. And just remember that even bumping it to 1080p is a massive result for all PlayStation 2 games. Anastrophic filtering, I'm going to put this to around four times. What this is going to do is give some pixels a slight blur. So things won't look so pixelated by putting this on. Again, just like internal resolution, anastrophic filtering is very hard wearing on your computer. So if you've got a lower end computer, I would suggest just putting it to off or even two times. So I'm going to leave this to four times and see how that goes. Next up, we're just going to go down to OK for now. Now, let me just remind you, we can actually set our graphics card. So if I go back to Config, Video, Plugin Settings. Uh, just a minute ago, I was talking about Render. We can actually set this up for our graphics card. So what I'm going to do is put Direct 3D 11 on. And if we then go to Adapter, which is now opened up, for example, I can choose my RTX 3050. So obviously you're going to have a different graphics card, but what I was saying just a minute ago is that generally OpenGL work fine. But if you do want to use your graphics card for that extra bit of boost if you've got one, then by all means put that on. So that's some basic video settings for you. So let's just open up a game again with those video settings applied. So I'm going to do this through RetroHub. And this time I'm going to open up the Sky Gunner game. And that's it for today's Retro Hub and PlayStation 2 setup guide. So like I said at the start of the video, if you're a little bit confused of watching this, do check yesterday's video out for the initial setup guide and then come back to this video. It will make much more sense if you watch the first one before you attempt setting up PlayStation 2 for Retro Hub. Anyways, if you liked the video today, hit notification, subscribe and like so you don't miss upcoming retro emulation content. Also feel free to join me on social media. I'm on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter and TikTok. But until next time, stay retro.